Okay, so now we are going to look at the binary search based um, method for quantifying the network level similarity. Um, so remember uh, this approach could be used to quantify the network level similarity of the nodes in a complex network with respect to two or more node level metrics. Okay, so you need to have at least two metrics uh, to be considered to use this approach. Uh, the advantage of this approach is uh, you could have nodes with all zeros in that metric vector unlike the quasi similarity based approach where you cannot have that all, or we can't have a node with all zeros in the feature vector here you could have nodes with all zeros in the feature or metric vector so let k be the number of node level metrics that are considered so k has to be greater than or equal to 2 so these are the four steps you do. So the first step is to determine the raw data that we uh, want to uh, use as the basis for the network level similarity assessment. So if you are uh, uh, interested in uh, assessing the network level similarity based on the centrality matrix, so generate the centrality metric values for the given graph. So I have given you a centrality matrix jar file that will generate you the raw data. Now you can determine the normalized values, for, norm, you can normalize this individual centrality matrix and generate the normalized data. Now remember when you uh, diagonal centrality, uh, it's already normalized. So the normalized data for eigenvector centrality is going to be the same as the raw data. So that's the property of eigenvector centrality. So the third step is to distribute the vertices in a coordinate system. So again, k can be greater than equal to 2. So if you consider k to be 2, and let us say the two metrics are degree and eigenvector centrality, you have um, a two-dimensional coordinate system with the normalized values for the degree and eigenvector centrality serving as the coordinate values. So the coordinate value is always going to be between 0 to 1 because you're considering using the normalized data. So for example, uh, the coordinate for vertex 0 is closely to close to 0 0.2 and like 0 0.15 so if you go back to the data set the normalized data for it takes 0, 0 0.1943 and 0 0.1535 so close to what I said for it it says 4 and 5 it's going to be close to 0.5 and 0.5 as you just see here 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so let's check so 0.4856 and 0 0.4842, 0 0.4856 and 0 0.4685. Okay, so as you can see in this uh, in these two coordinate systems, you can see the vertices are more closer to each other in the degree eigenvector centrality based coordinate system, and they are kind of far away from each other in the betweenness closeness based centrality system in the coordinate system. So from this kind of we can get an idea that uh, the vertices are going to be more similar to each other in the degree eigenvector centrality based coordinate system and they are farther away from each other in the between us closeness. So that means the network level similarity index that we would measure would be larger for the degree eigenvector centrality system compared to the between us closeness centrality system. Now, uh, let us go through an example in detail um, of this process. So, the first step is to generate the raw data, and uh, we are going to we are interested here only in degree eigenvector centrality based uh, similarity assessment. So, I have here the raw data that we could generate from centrality matrix file, and we could normalize this data. Um, now, actually, this normalization uh, is done within our program so you don't have to really normalize you just generate the raw data now use the raw data itself as input to a pairwise distance be, uh, uh, between uh, to compute the pairwise distance between the nodes you don't have to normalize it the program that i have given you for generating the or computing the pairwise distance will normalize the raw data and internally generate the normalized data and use that as a basis to compute the pairwise distance between the nodes Okay, so the uh, pairwise distance between the nodes is a Euclidean distance. Okay, so if you use this as a coordinates of the vertices, so it is, as I said here, it's going to be this formula that is used to generate the pairwise distance. So it's going to be point, so if you're looking at the node pair 0, 1, it's going to be 0 0.1943 minus 0 0.2914, the difference square 
plus 0.1535 minus 0.2518 that difference square then square root of that sum of the squares of the differences so that's going to be the pairwise distance so it's the Euclidean distance so you do that and generate the pairwise distance for any two nodes so that's what we call as a pairwise distance matrix so how to generate it so let me show you the process so load the uh, pairwise distance executable file it's a jar file I've given you and now go to uh, so you need to feed in sorry one second so this is the degree argument centrality data set so you have to sh save this to a file text file probably I have done it um, let me yeah so that's going to be it's already saved in pairwise file let me pull it up okay so this is the text file now you could again use blank space or tab as a separator make sure the cursor is always in the last line okay so this is the file I'm going to load as input to my pairwise systems program So that will generate now the pairwise distance matrix and that is what I have shown here okay so I have shown here the pairwise distance matrix based on the raw data and as I said internally the program that computes this pairwise distance matrix uh, would have initially normalized the raw data set and generated this data and use this as a basis to compute the, to compute the pairwise distance between the nodes okay so um, now what we'll do is go through a sequence of iterations uh, now what we are going to determine is we are going to kind of connect the vertices in this coordinate system uh, such that two vertices are connected if the distance between them which is the Euclidean distance between them is less than or equal to a threshold so if again what I, I'll repeat so we are going to build a connected graph of this vertices connected graph means vertices should be reachable uh, either right away through an edge or by going through some intermediate vertex so we are going to say there's an edge between two vertices if the distance between them, if the Euclidean distance between them is less than or equal to a threshold. If the Euclidean distance between them is greater than a threshold, they are not going to have an edge between them. Okay. So now what could be the maximum distance between any two vertices in this coordinate system? This is a two-dimensional coordinate system uh, with dimension values going from ranging from 0 to 1. So the maximum distance between any two vertices is going to be if the two vertices are located at uh, like uh, at 0, 1 here on the top and 0, 1 here on the right. So the distance is going to be square root of 2 because it's going to be uh, 0 minus 1 square plus again one, 0 minus 1 square so it's going to be square root of 2. Now. Um, so in general if you have k dimensions the maximum possible distance between any two vertices in the k dimension coordinate system is going to be square root of k okay um, on the other hand uh, the minimum possible distance between any two vertices is going to be zero and that is possible only if all the vertices are co-located co-located means every vertex has the same coordinate now if they don't have if all the vertices are not co-located then you need to have or not you need to have then um, um, then the vertices will not be uh, connected or will, uh, you will not be able to get a connected graph if you keep the threshold distance as zero because if the vertices are not co-located and the threshold distance is zero 
then you see what I mean. Uh, there can be an edge between any two vertices only if the Euclidean distance between them is less than or equal to the threshold. And if the threshold distance is zero, and if the vertices are not co-located, um, you will not have any edge in the graph. So the graph is not going to be connected. On the other hand, if the distance, if the threshold is square root of two, then the dis Euclidean distance between any two vertices is going to be always less than or equal to the threshold of square root of 2. So that means if your threshold distance is square root of 2, which is square root of k in general, then what you're going to get is a complete graph. So in a complete graph, every vertex has an edge to every other vertex. And that is possible only because the distance between any two vertices is going to be less than or equal to square root of 2 in this two-dimensional coordinate system. Alright, so that's what I want to use as the basis. So the pairwise distance between nodes is given here. So we are going to have use binary search. So we are going to say the left index initially is 0 and right index is square root of 2 which is 1.414. So, uh, the, so as I said, we are going to always maintain an invariant when we do binary search and the invariant here is the graph is always not going to be connected at the left index and the graph is always going to be connected at the right index. So that's the invariant. Okay. And so what we'll do is in each iteration, we will have a left index and right index and we will compute the middle index and try to build a graph based on the middle index as the, using the middle index as a threshold distance. If you are able to get a connected graph with the middle index used as a threshold distance, okay, that means we can move the right index to the left because the graph is connected always at the right index. And we found out that the graph is connected at even at the middle index when, you, when it is used as a threshold distance. So there's no point in searching for the minimum threshold distance to be greater than the middle index. Again, remember the objective of this whole process is to find what is the minimum value of the threshold distance. So given this distribution of the vertices, the objective is to find what is the minimum value of the threshold distance using which we can get a connected graph. And with the graph always not connected at the left index and it's always connected at the right index used as a threshold distance, the minimum threshold distance is going to be all is going to be somewhere greater than the left index and less than or equal to the right index. And we are in search of that minimum threshold distance. Okay. Uh, so, now let us see if the graph is connected when the middle index is used as a threshold distance. So the threshold distance is 0 0.7070 which is the average of left and right index. And if you go to the pairwise distance matrix, every entry in this matrix is less than 0 0.7070. So that is why I say there is an edge between any two vertices in the graph when we use the meaning middle index as a threshold distance. So that's why I have a complete graph. So that means the minimum threshold distance that we need for just a connected graph is not going to be uh, to the right of the middle index because we already found the middle index threshold distance is uh, will yield a connected graph. So that means we can move the right index to the left and set the right index to be the middle index. So left index is still at 0, right index is 0 0.7070. So the new middle index is 0 0.3535 which is the average of the left and right index. So 0 plus 0 0.7070 divided by 2 is 0 0.3535. Now using this as the threshold distance we try to build a graph. And again, if you go to the pairwise distance matrix, um, other than this entry between 0, 4 and down 0, 5, everything else is less than or, yeah, everything else is less than 0.3535. So, I'm not going to have an edge between 0, 4 
and between 0 and 5. But I'm going so this is our original previous graph, right? At threshold distance of 0 0.7070. 0. So now in from this graph, I'm going to just remove 0, 4 and 0, 5, the two edges, because the Euclidean distance between 0, 4 is 0 0.4407. That is not less than our threshold distance, not just 0.3535. Similarly, the distance between 0 and 5 is 0.4291. That is not less than 0.3535. So we are not going to have an edge between 0, 4 and 0, 5. But the graph is now still connected when this 0.3535, the middle index is used as a threshold distance. That means we can move the right index further to the left by setting the right index to be this middle index value of 0.3535. So left index is 0, right index is 0.3535, so the new middle index is average of 0 and 0.3535, which is 0.1768. So now go back to the pairwise distance matrix and find out which pairs have distance greater than 0.1768. So you find like 0, 2, 0, 3 and several other pairs are having distance greater than this 0.1768. So what you do is then from taking using this graph as a basis, remove the edges between all for all node pairs whose Euclidean distance is greater than 0.1768. So for example, 0, 02 is point, 0 0.026 greater than 0.1768. So from this graph we will remove the edge for 0, 02. So 0, 02 doesn't have an edge here. Similarly, 0, 03 the Euclidean distance between them is 0 0.2099 so remove H03 from this graph and this is what we have. If, there's an, if the distance is less than 0 0.1768 so for example um, 0 0.01 the distance is less than 0 0.1768 we are going to retain that H. Okay. So using this approach we can now get a graph like this and by visually looking at it, we can see it is a connected graph. So that means we can move the right index further to the left and set it as 0.1768, the middle index. So the new middle index is average of 0 and 0 0.1768 is 0 0.0884. So in from this, using this graph now as a basis, retain only those edges whose Euclidean distance is less than or equal to 0 0.084 and this is what we end up with. So for example 0 1 the distance is 0 0.1382 which is greater than 0 0.0884 so 0 1 does not have an edge. Whereas 3 7 has a Euclidean distance of 0 0.0048 and that's greater than so less than 0 0.0884 so they have an edge between them. Similarly 3 6 the distance is 0 0.0048 that is less than 0 0.0884 so they have an edge between them. Now you see this is not a connected graph. So the left index need not be at 0 we can move it further to the right um, and set it as set the middle index value as the left index. So left index is 0 0.0884. So you see the idea here. So the graph is not connected when we use 0 0.0884 as the threshold distance. So definitely the graph is not going to be connected if we even go less than this. So the, the minimum threshold distance has to be somewhere greater than 0 0.0884 but less than 0.1768. That's what we, the idea. So that's why I said the left index to be 0 0.0884 and the right index to be as, as before 0.1768. So the new middle index is 0 0.1326 which is average of this left and right index values and we get such a graph like this which is again not a connected graph. So you can make the left index to be 0 0.1326, right index is 0 0.1768, this is the middle index 0 0.1547, again we don't have a connected graph at that middle index used as a threshold distance. So I can make left index is 0.1547, right index is 0.1768, the new middle index is 0.1658. Again, this is not a connected graph at that middle index uses a threshold distance. So keep going. So now we can again set left index is 0.1658, right index is 0.1768, the new middle index is 0.1713, again not a connected graph. So set the left index as 0.1713, right index is 0.1768. The middle index is 0 0.1741 and um, the edge that we have here is 25 
and the distance between 2 and 5 is 0.1721 that is less than or equal to 0.1741 so that's why we have between them so this is a connected graph so that means you have to move the right index further to the left and set the right index as 0.1741 left index is 0.1713 the numeral index is 0.1727 and the graph is going to be connected so set the middle index the right index to 0.1727 left index is 0.1713 the middle index is 0.1720 at which the graph is not connected so that means the left index can be set to be 0.1720 right index is 0.1727 so you may be wondering how long we can proceed like this. So you proceed until the absolute difference between the right index and left index is less than a threshold. Uh, so this epsilon is can, can be called the termination threshold to make it different from the threshold distance. So the epsilon is called the termination threshold and we, use zero, we could use 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 and so on. The smaller the termination threshold, the more accurate is going to be our um, final answer. So the moment the left the absolute difference between the right and left index becomes less than the termination threshold, we, we stop the binary search algorithm and say the latest value of the right index is the minimum threshold distance that is needed to get a complete connected, not a complete, that is needed to get a connected graph. Okay. So again I'll repeat, so the um, value of the right index at the time you stop the algorithm is the minimum threshold distance that is required to get a connected graph of this vertices in the coordinate system you're looking at. So here looking at the degree eigenvector centrality based two dimensional coordinate system. And the latest value of the right index is 0.1727. So that's the minimum threshold distance to get a com connected graph of the vertices. So now what we do is the network level similarity index can be defined as 1 minus that right index value divided by square root of 2. So now why we divide the, why we have formulation like this? You see that this is the minimum threshold distance to get a connected graph. Now just assume for a moment that all the vertices are co-located. Then we can get a connected graph of the vertices at a value of 0 as a threshold distance. On the other hand, let us say the vertices are like just totally far away from each other, then the threshold, the minimum threshold distance that they could, that is needed to get a connected graph could be as, as, as large as square root of 2. Uh, why square root of 2? Because it's a two-dimensional coordinate system. So the value for this minimum threshold distance could range anywhere from 0 to square root of 2. If it is 0, that means the vertices are co-located, that means they are exactly similar to each other. On the other hand, if the vertices are just far away from each other, not similar at all to each other, this minimum threshold distance would be as large as square root of 2. So now we want to quantify the similarity. So if since the a value of 0 for the minimum threshold distance indicates the maximum similarity and the value of square root of 2 for uh, the minimum threshold distance indicates the minimum similarity I do like this 1 minus of that minimum threshold distance divided by square root of 2 so this way I am make, going to make this fraction of the ratio going to be less than 1 unless or not equal to 1 and if the vertices are co-located then this ratio fraction is going to be 0 divided by square root of 2 which is 0 so 1 minus 0 is going to be 1 on the other hand if the minimum threshold distance is square root of 2 then square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so now we see if the vertices are co-located, maximum similarity, then the network level similarity index is 1. On the other hand, if the vertices have minimum similarity, 1 minus 1 is going to be close to 0. So that means the network level similarity index will be close to 0. Okay. So that's the idea. So in this case, we got 0.1727 divided by square root of 2. So 1 minus of this ratio is going to be 0.8779. So that is the network level similarity index for this graph 
based on degree and eigenvector centrality. Now you can go through the same sort of calculations based on betweenness and closeness. And you are more likely to get a uh, network loss in that index less than 0.8779 because of this distribution of these vertices like this. Okay, so as you can see, since the vertices are more further away from each other, the minimum threshold distance that is needed to generate a connected graph of these vertices is going to be larger compared to the minimum threshold distance of 0.1727 that we got for this distribution of the vertices. So we are going to get a larger value for the minimum threshold distance in order to get a connected graph of betweenness and closeness and tality. So that larger value divided by square root of 2, but 1 minus of that ratio is going to make it less than 0.8779. Okay. So if you look at the time complexity of this approach, the number of iterations we proceed simply will depend upon the termination threshold. Because in each iteration, we are reducing the difference between left index and right index by what? By half of the previous search space. So previously, it can be anywhere from 0 to 1.4140. The next iteration, we say, can be anywhere from 0 to 0 0.7070. And the next iteration, between 0 to 0 0.3535. So you notice here, in each iteration, we are reducing the search space by half. Okay. So... Um, the number of iterations we would need then is logarithm of square root of k divided by epsilon. Square root of k um, is the um, uh, maximum value for threshold distance. So in the two-dimensional coordinate system, that would be square, that would be square root of two divided by the threshold distance. Uh, threshold uh, so divided by the termination threshold, which is epsilon. So we keep reducing the search space by half in each iteration until the dis uh, difference between the left and right index is less than this termination threshold. How many iterations you would need for that? It is logarithm of square root of k divided by epsilon to the base 2. That's the number of iterations we would need. And in each iteration, uh, you need to build a graph and check if it's connected. So we can use the bet for search algorithm for that and that will be a v plus e time complexity. Now, the number of edges could be written as big O of V square. Okay. So that means the time complexity of the algorithm in overall would be like in each iteration we need to spend V square time to build a connected graph and to build a graph and check if it's connected. Um, so the total time overall time complex is going to be V square times the number of iterations, which is log of square root of k divided by epsilon to the base 2. So that's the time complexity. Now space complexity is in each iteration we need space to store a graph. But of course you see you can reuse that space for the next iteration. You don't need to remember the previous graph. So all we need is a v squared space to store the graph information. Like in adjacent symmetrics so it's requiring v square space, right? So essentially, we need to maintain, uh, we, um, allocate v-square space to store whether there's an edge between any two vertices or not. Okay. So with that, we'll finish this video.